getting your head bashed around quite a bit as a SEAL for all those years at Team 5 would have uh, caused some significant brain uh, type of injuries or something. Yeah, man, that's who I'm talking to? Yeah, it's Don Shipley, bro. Who? Don Shipley. Don Shipley. Yeah. Any bigger ones? Valorous Awards? I got uh, the Silver Cross. Silver Cross. How about that, man? That's a, that's something. I went wow. through SEAL training class 131. Wow. Yeah. It certainly is a pleasure to talk to uh, a fellow SEAL. <laughs> yeah. It's the same here, Vernon, but we have that we have that problem of being not seeing you listed as ever being a SEAL, and you can't remember your SEAL training class number. Anytime that I post up anything except the phony Navy SEAL of the Week video on my YouTube channel, you guys attack me. Off with his head. You don't want to see that bullshit. Well, some of you want to see that bullshit, so if you want to, get on Diane's uh, YouTube channel, Navy Mom 2 2. She's got all kinds of good shit up there about how we came up in the Navy, uh, interviews with all these CEOs. She's got all kinds of stuff. Navy Mom 2 2. Check it out. Check it out. Or something bad's going to happen to this dog. Military phonies are deplorable and exhausting to deal with. The only two things worse than a military phony is a reporter that does a news story on one of them or a charity that gives them something. And when you contact that charity and that news reporter and tell them that what you just wrote or what you've been doing is, is all wrong, he's a total phony, then the gloves come off with them, and they start sinking their teeth into you. Where's your proof? How would you know? You know, it's above your security. Yeah, I've heard it all, and it just infuriates me. I just don't like the story that you wrote or what you're doing, and I'm merely trying to be nice and set the record straight so that you'll get rid of that shit that you wrote up there about this retired Navy SEAL who is a habitual sexual predator. He rapes people. He rapes women. That's what he does. And there's no research involved in this. They, the reporters and charities uh, often can't get past this whole Navy SEAL thing. They have to write about it because they know it's going to get them traction, whether it's true or not. And this gal that did this, I'm going to take it real easy on them. Yesterday, what, uh, her story aired a couple of days ago, and the next morning, I was sent that for verification, and I wrote her an email, my form letter email, of that guy's full name that he was never a SEAL, the SEAL verification. And at the top of that, I said, Kayla, trust but verify. There are people who lie to reporters. That's it. She writes me back this condescending, rude email, basically telling me I had no idea what the fuck I was talking about, and to... Get, stay out of her business. That she's the expert. And she touts on her LinkedIn that she's a six-time Emmy Award-winning journalist and an invest for investigative reporting. I'm going to take it real easy on her because she wrote back after I sent her and I sent her a scathing email back of what I thought of her reporting. I also sent it to the news director at that station and the general manager and others who had sent that to me to let them know and wrote her and told her that uh, by the time you had your first cup of coffee the next morning, I already had that guy's full name, his date of birth, his social security number, his driver's license and where it was issued, all his past addresses and his phone number. And it didn't take me long to Google that clown's name in the state that he lived in. And here it all comes, baby. Arrested mugshot. Boosh. Habitual sexual offender. Well, she sure changed her tune when uh, I wrote that email back about who I was and how I felt about that detestable, despicable story. And I got a hold of that clown, too. You're really going to like this guy. And when I asked him how that uh, reporter checked your story, he told me I showed her some pictures. You showed her some pictures. And I believe that. Just overwhelmed by the Navy SEAL and 
the charity that's involved in this, I'm sure that's how it all started. This charity uh, was ripped off for thousands of bucks. Somebody hacked their website and stole from them. And uh, I guess they contact the uh, the media to come out and, and, and do a news story on this. And oh, by the way, uh, our spokesman is this retired Navy SEAL. Maybe she figured they wouldn't lie to her, and that's all the verification she did. If she would have just Googled his name like I did, and she would have seen all of it. But her big point of uh, contention on that was uh, that I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about, that he did retire from the Navy. He enlisted in 1974, as he told me, and retired in 1994. Well, when you search his stuff, he was incarcerated in 1985 for uh, raping uh, someone and served 15 years in the Who's Gal. Well, when you send all that and all his mug shots and these lengthy arrest records to that, and you send them to her boss and the general manager of that news station, yeah, there's going to be some reeling involved and some big apologies sent to me. So I don't hold any malice. You know, All I'm pissed off about is you should have listened to me in the first place. Maybe you should have searched my name instead of making me spend hours because that's how I roll. I will never just send you an email that I haven't read uh, a dozen times uh, to check and proof it and then reread it a dozen times after I've sent it. So it takes me a lot longer than others to be very accurate with what I'm doing and I, uh, I, I just tire of it. And so this charity, as you'll see in this story, has been with lavishing this phony for nine years. Furnished his uh, apartment, house, whatever the hell he's living in, and gave him money financially for presents under his trees. He counts that. And when you listen to him talk about this uh, charity that helped him, listen to what he says. Listen closely as he says, they, do, they did more for me than other veterans charities did. Meaning, he is a serial charity ripper-offer guy. Soft targets, churches, charities, all that stuff. And he uses that seal bomb, and they never checked it. So this charity whines about how much money they lost from this guy that hacks their computers. And I know with some simple math, that number would pale in comparison to what you've given that phony, that retired Navy SEAL overall. And all you had to do was Google it. But when I contact them, they just want to sweep it under the rug. Oh, you don't want to make that, make that go away. It'll affect our donations. When you should be lighting him up online, for other charities to see what he did to you so he and others like him can't do it to other charities. I mean, isn't that the, it's supposed to be the American way? Admit your mistakes and tell others about them so they don't get caught up in these scams. And same with that reporter. The last I uh, left with her was, uh, you need to take a big bite out of his ass. You need to sink your teeth in him and, and redo another story on him and talk about what a fraud he is. And uh, I don't know if they will. She retracted the story. Very lucky for her. They kept the story up, but they removed all references to him and the seal. And they removed this clip you're about to see off of the Internet from it. But I really wanted her to go after uh, that guy again. Because as I told her in there in a second, very lengthy email back thanking her for apologizing to me. I said, Navy SEALs, when written about, good bad, fake, or legit. Anything about Navy SEALs is going to get you a lot of mileage. But you want mileage, more mileage than that story you did about him being uh, such a help, uh, a handout from that charity and this charity involved? You write about him with stolen valor and you tag that and see what kind of views you get, the attention you get. You, you learned a big lesson from me. Now you should share that with everybody. Look what happened to me. Uh, Emmy Award winning investigative reporter and look what happened to me. I was duped. It would go a long way. Again, there's no action needed by anybody. I took care of it, but it was painful and I want everybody just to know how this stuff goes. These are not easy to deal with. Uh, the people that are involved, but especially the media, because you're telling them what you wrote is wrong and you need to retract it. And that's the last thing they ever, ever want to do 
is go to their boss and say, oh, hey, well, we got a problem here. So they condescend me rude and try to make me go away, and I will not. So it's all worked out, and you'll get to hear this clown because I called him, and he answered, and he runs off at the mouth. He just spews bullshit to me. So this is part one. This is the buildup into this thing. And I'll get part two up tomorrow with him. And I'm just really upset today. Again, no other action is needed. I'm still uh, hoping she will. Uh, I asked her very nicely to contact that charity because their emails just keep getting kicked back. And I don't think they return their phone calls because uh, I have. And uh, hopefully she will reach out and straighten them out and never give that phony one more red cent. Here's part one. Now to a story you'll only see on 13 ABC. A local nonprofit is reeling after discovering a hacker stole thousands of dollars from their organization. Heroes in Action supports local service members, veterans, and their families. Tonight, 13 ABC's Kayla Molander reports on their mission to get justice and continue to serve. Their blessing. Uh, the work that they do, they're miracle workers. Verlon James served our country for 20 years as a U.S. Navy SEAL. For the last nine years, he's benefited from a local organization that's helped him ever since he moved to Toledo. But they've always been there for me, even more so than other veterans organizations. And for the last 17 years, Heroes in Action has helped other local service members, veterans, and their families. But the organization recently discovered a series of unauthorized transactions on the books, amounting to thousands of dollars of stolen money. To rob an organization like Heroes in Action is trifling. It breaks my heart, it really does. The group has completely furnished his home. It's kept food on his table and put gifts under the Christmas tree. For James, the incident is personal. The organization losing money that they could have used to help his fellow veterans. Possibly uh, five veterans that we could have fed well, fed, fed them very well, possibly for three to six months. Operations manager Trent Heisler tracked the charges to a person unknown to the organization, then turned the name over to Toledo police, who are investigating. Both men have a message for the person who did this. You broke the law and you're going to face the, face the consequences, and I don't think anybody's going to feel bad for him about that. Give it back. And uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you would like to help Heroes in Action, visit our website at 13abc.com. Verlin. Yeah. Hey, Verlin, how you doing? I'm good. I saw the uh, the article, thousands stolen from a local nonprofit. Uh, is everything uh, going well with that investigation? Um, they know who did it. They just got to prosecute it. Wow. Now, how long have you been uh, with them or helping them, the uh, nonprofit? Or uh, nine years. Oh wow! How about that? That's fantastic. And it said here you were. I'm an old bosun mate in the Navy. It seems like a long time ago. But uh, when did you uh, retire? Did you did you retire? Yeah. Oh wow! What year would that be? Ninety four. Oh man! I'll be do I'll be doggone. Uh, where were you? Uh, where were you serving at? Mm -hmm. Coronado, and as you know, SEAL Team Five. Uh, we went everywhere. Oh, you're SEAL Team Five. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! How about that? Oh, well, did you do that right out of the boot camp, or were you in the Navy for a while? I'll be doggone and went right to SEAL Team 5? Yep. Wow. Did your whole, you did 20 years? Yep. 
Oh man, that's fantastic. That is really something, is a uh, seal. You're kind of fortunate to still be around, isn't that the case? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So uh, I've uh, got some health problem, but uh, I'm grateful to be on this side of the dirt. Yeah, well, I can appreciate that after all you've been through. Did you you did your whole time at SEAL Team Five? Yeah. And, well, I bet you got some stories. Did you uh, see any combat? I saw a mostly combat. Can you talk about any of the countries you were in? Oh boy. Egypt. Kenya. Um, I've been to the Philippines, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Thailand. I've been to France, Germany. England, Amsterdam, did I mention uh, Australia? No, it would have been uh, the, uh, down under. Down oh, yeah. under, Oh, yeah. Well, not all those countries were combat, right? We're still friendly with some of those, like Australia. You weren't, were you shooting people down there, or was it just uh, some kind of... No, mm -mm. How about that? Where did the uh, bulk of the combat come from? South America, Colombia. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, uh, 94, you did your 20. That would have put you in 1974. Yep. Yep, you got... 74. Oh, man. Well, you got me. I went in in 78. So, uh, fantastic. Just old Bosomate. Uh, fast frigate type of thing like that. So, uh, Vernon, do you remember what your SEAL training class number was? Injuries? I got shot three times when I was in. Oh, man. Where'd, the, where'd those bullets land? Uh, one in the back, one in the buttocks, and one in the shoulder. I'll be doggone. You're lucky that one didn't get in your head. So I, I guess some getting your head bashed around quite a bit as a seal for all those years at Team 5 would have uh, caused some significant brain uh, type of injuries or something. Yeah, it's Don Shipley, bro. Who? Don Shipley. Don Shipley. Yep. I run a charity here in uh, in Maryland for the uh, wounded guys, kids with cancer, take them out ducking, goose hunting, and things like that. Somebody had sent me a link to that uh, article that was done, the thousands stolen from a local nonprofit, and uh, being a retired Navy SEAL. And so I, I watched that, and I, I, I looked at that, and it's too bad that people would do that to a charity. But I was uh, looking up your name in the SEAL database. It's a complete listing of every guy since 1943 that went through any form of underwater demolition, scouts and raiders, uh, Navy SEAL training to today's present-day frogmen. And I didn't see a listing of your name in there as being a uh, Bud Scratch on a Navy SEAL. Well, any idea why that would be? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> well, you know. I know I can find it. Oh, you can find it? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that, that'd be something there. Were you able to show proof to that reporter and she just take your word for it? Oh, pictures. Okay, good. Well, here's the other part of the problem. You know, when you can't remember your SEAL training class, 
1983. You went in in 74, right out of boot camp, and went to SEAL Team 5 and spent 20 years there. That doesn't happen. Aside of that, uh, SEAL Team 5 didn't get its start until 1983 when the last UDT teams, underwater demolition teams, were decommissioned. They created SEAL Team 3, 5, and 4. On the East okay. Coast and the West. Uh, I've seen a TV program to that effect, but there were secret teams that existed that was never uh, publicized, was never brought to the public's attention. Oh, wow. Classified stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. Are your, are your service, your records, any uh, awards, are they classified? Yes. Oh, wow. How about that? Did you get any awards? Uh, quite a few. Be doggone. What was, the, uh, what was the biggest one? Had to get something for being shot. Oh, uh, that's the Purple Heart. Yep. Any bigger ones? Valorous awards? Silver Cross. How about that, man? That's a, that's something. I had so many medals, I couldn't take them off my off my uh, uniform. I could never get them back in order. <laughs> oh, well, how about that? No. I've heard of a a Navy Cross. I've heard of a Silver Star. I never heard of a Silver Cross. Right up till 1983, Vernon, there are only two SEAL teams in existence, SEAL Team 1, SEAL Team 2. The rest of them have come online. We're up to uh, Team 7 and Team uh, 10 on the East Coast and Team 7 out on Little Creek or uh, Coronado, California. Again, Team 5 didn't come into place. There were no of these classified teams. I'm a retired SEAL, Vernon, an actual one. And, uh, oh, yeah. I went through oh, SEAL training class 131. Wow. Yeah. It certainly is a pleasure to talk to uh, a fellow SEAL. <laughs> yeah, it's the same here, Vernon, but we have that we have that problem of being not seeing you listed as ever being a SEAL, and you can't remember your SEAL training class number. I, and anybody that went through there, you would have screamed at every day a hundred times a day at the top of your lungs. You'd forget your mother's name before you'd forget a SEAL training class number. <laughs> yeah, I have Parkinson's, so uh, parts of my memory are shadowy. Oh, let me, let me help you out with some of that. Uh, you weren't a SEAL. You didn't go through that thing. You don't have a silver cross. You weren't stationed at SEAL Team 5. And nobody does 20 years in the Navy and stays at the same SEAL team. You know, me, I was at Team 1, Team 2. I was a BUDS instructor, you know, a, a group level uh, instructor. We'd... Anything on that? Okay, were you spreading it on a little thick to that reporter, Vern? Berlin? No. That, that no. was all the truth? All the truth. I'll be doggone. Well, I know how much we can uh, do. I wrote her today and told her that I didn't see any record of you doing that. So, and when you put yourself out there as a retired SEAL, and I don't find anything of it, you know. But that's your story? You're sticking to it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was a good that was a pretty good story too so uh, I enjoyed it anything else for me uh, no except once again thank you for your service well that means a lot because I certainly earned that stuff out there take it easy man you also <laughs> there, ain't, there wasn't any undoing that, uh, the, the, finding the good side of that apple and having him to uh, confess. I've dealt with guys like that before. Uh, he's not out there, out there, but he just, he just talks. 
He just talks. I've been all over his uh, Facebook and uh, but to get him to make him nervous about confronting him or something like that, he doesn't have that type of personality in him. He just spreads those bullshit things and even finding out that, uh, you know, I was a real seal uh, did not rattle him at all. I mean, he's out there. So, uh, he knows it's wrong. He knows it's bullshit. You know, the whole Purple Heart sil uh, Silver Cross, really? Okay, dude, whatever. But uh, there's just some guys like that. I could, I'd be on the phone with him all day long, and his tone and attitude and story would never have changed. And then there's other guys that I can just unravel and go at them, but you hit them with the facts, and it doesn't, it doesn't phase them. He's been telling this bullshit for so long, but it is a problem for me because of the charity out there. He's not entitled to any of that that he's getting from this charity, and he's been at that charity for nine years and says in here, you know, that they're putting food under his tree and it's kept food on his table and put gifts under his Christmas tree. For James, when they stole this money from that, it's personal. It's personal that somebody stole that money, so you can't get any more on your plate lying like that. So I've uh, written the uh, reporter. We, we checked the uh, civil Serviceman Civil Relief Act the website, and I didn't find any listing of him retiring from the Navy. Anything after 1985, you are listed up there, and uh, he's not listed up there. So I, I know he was in the Navy, uh, but I don't think he did much more than a hitch. And he certainly didn't stick around till 95, and he certainly wasn't at Team 5 with a silver cross and so many medals he couldn't lift his, get him off his uniform. That All that just rings so that he doesn't know jack shit about the military. He couldn't get them all back in order. I mean, that's how long ago he was in and what a very, very short time it was. So he's just ripping off a charity. I've contacted the reporter. I'm, I'm calling the charity, and uh, we'll see what we can do. But when you write the words, retired U.S. Navy SEAL, when somebody prints that, we have these people. They just sit around with those Google alerts looking for anything SEAL-related, retired SEAL, ex-SEAL, former SEAL, any, anything like that. And uh, it shoots right into their inbox. There's a story posted, and they send it right to me. So. What a clown that guy is. What a total clown. Uh, I'm calling about a, uh, a uh, phony steel verification that you did for someone uh, recently. Um, I am in possession of the letter that you sent him acknowledging that this gentleman was, in fact, a phony. Um, so this is a little different. The request that I have is uh, I believe that your assessment was incorrect. I don't think you had the right information. Uh, the gentleman in question was, in fact, Navy SEAL, served proudly for 18 years in the teams. And um, I wanted to clear this up because this is this has kind of blown up into a situation that needs to be rectified. This gentleman has been dishonored, and I want to I want to make it right. So if you could call me back.